Today we're going to be tearing down a Mercedes-Benz M270 engine to see what's inside and how it works. Now the M270 engines are a 2 liter 4 cylinder engine that's often hooked up with a turbocharger. This one being out of a 2014 CLA 250. Now we don't really know the history behind this engine so we're going to start by taking a look all the way around. Now remember these are mounted transversely because the vehicles are primarily front wheel drive. You can see we've got the oil filter mounted on this side. This is the intake side over here. And then we've got this coolant junction block over here. At the top here we've got the ventilation that comes from the block itself straight up to the oil filler cap that goes into the valve cover to get vented. Now this engine is all made of aluminum including the oil pan, the block, the heads, the timing chain covers and even the valve cover which I like because there's no use of plastics or heavy steel. Looking at the motor from the front here we've got dual variable valve timing that's controlled electronically through these little oil control valves here. You got the accessory that would be driven off of the crank pulley over here and here you got your thermostat and the water pump assembly on this side here. Now over on this side here you got your direct injection pump which is going to pressurize high pressure gasoline to go down directly into the injectors right in the middle of the cylinders typically where your spark plugs would be. The spark plugs themselves are actually offset and located along the side of the head here with these ignition coils on top. The first thing I was going to do is pull the spark plugs but a regular spark plug socket doesn't even fit in here and a regular deep socket is actually too shallow. I'm going to pull the ignition coils first. Oh, there we go. Interesting that it's got a bend because it's got to go on the side of the engine. And next up at the top here, we've got the high pressure fuel pump. Just under this line here. Gasoline is probably going to drip all over me. So I've got my brother's old quilt here. Oh yeah, there's gasoline all right. And then I can pop off the high pressure fuel pump. And you can see here it's got this spring that's going to bounce up and down. There's a cam lobe inside of here. It's going to move up and down. And that's what's going to pressurize the fuel coming in here. And you've also got a pressure transducer over here. All right, next up I'm going to remove the fuel rail. After a little bit of trying action, I can remove the fuel rail with the injectors. Here you can see we've got the direct injectors. Nice and long because it goes through the head and then down into the combustion chamber to be injected fuel at high pressure. Now like many modern vehicles, the intake manifold does not have enough vacuum pressure to power things like your brake booster. So they've actually got a vacuum pump which is running off of the exhaust camshaft in this engine. So we're going to go ahead and remove all the fasteners connecting that. Long torques. And I'm going to remove that vacuum pump. Now I'm going to knock off this oil filler cap. At the top here you can see the two camshaft position sensors. Next I'm going to do is take off all these e-torx bolts here to get the valve cover off. So in order to remove the valve cover it seems like i got to remove the timing chain cover which means that i got to remove these two little actuators over here. I've already removed the fasteners here. You can see this is what the actuator looks like. Looks like just a plunger that pushes down inside of here on this plunger. And then here's what the actuator looks on this side here. I'll just pop off that just a big piece of aluminum. I mean, if this was a Volkswagen or something, they'd probably use plastic to cover this and then it would leak after a while. Inside of here, you've got your intake and exhaust cam phasers for your variable valve timing. It's powered by this timing chain. On this side, it feels nice and tight. On this side, it feels a little loose. So I wonder if there was an issue with timing chain here. All right, so now I can remove the valve cover. Once again, this is a solid chunk of aluminum. And it looks like you've got your timing chain slide inside of here. And the cam bearings are all integrated in here. Here's where your injectors would sit. These look pretty scored up, actually. I can actually see grooves on these cam bearing surfaces here. And this is also where your camshaft sensors are. They're going to pick up sensing from the actual gears heads themselves. Now taking a look under the valve cover, it actually looks pretty simple. you just got your regular cam phasers here and your standard camshaft profiles. There's no VTEC style extra profiles, but the only one being this one here, which is for your direct injection fuel pump. These camshafts are going to roll on these roller rocker arm systems, which are then going to push down on your valve springs and thus the valves. Other than that it's pretty simple and straightforward. In terms of actual wear, again I can see the bearing surfaces here do have some scoring so I wonder if oiling was also an issue here too. And one thing I don't really like is that I got a custom tool that has to go into the star over here in order to release the variable valve cam phaser from the camshaft itself so I don't have that tool so we're gonna see if we can just get this chain off and then remove the entire thing with the camshaft. Another thing I don't like is that the timing chain cover on this part here is actually part of the head. This is all one piece. So the timing chain cover is only at the bottom here. So I'll have to remove that first, release the timing chain components, and then pull the head off. Now before I do any of that, I've got to remove this water pump assembly because some of it's blocking access to the timing cover bolts on the bottom half. I wonder if this engine is going to turn over. Yeah, surprisingly, it's not that bad. Taking a quick look at the cooling setup before I disconnect everything, you get your thermostat over here and the water pump which is going to push water inside of this 
engine block over here to cool things down. You've got another line that tees off of the thermostat, which is your bypass, and brings cooling back around to this big junction over here. You've got another radiator hose that comes off here. And at the top here, you've also got another cooling hose that leads out to cool your oil. So your oil cooler is actually associated inside of here. And then we've got this line that'll go back around to the front over here. So I can pull off this entire cooling assembly here with all of these extra lines. Now this water pump assembly has got some sort of a vacuum diaphragm actuated setup over here where these linkages are going to move in and out to control some sort of valving in here. They got a fresh battery here, Let's see if this can blast this off. Oh my god, I broke the socket. Because the chain is so loose, I was able to basically make it <laughs> fall off of these camshafts. I can just get the camshafts off by removing the top pieces. But in order to get the head off, I might have to pull out these little things here to release the slides. I'm going to go ahead and remove these torques here that are holding the camshafts down. And now let's remove this camshaft. This is a plug. The one over here. Now the head bolts on this engine are an external Torx 14. I'll go ahead and crack these loose. I'm going to run these bolts down. I'm going to try to remove this head, but I think these timing chain guides are going to screw me up. This side might come up with the head, but this timing chain guide actually has another pin down inside of there. So when I try to remove it here, it's not going to come out because that one's connected to the block. So I think I need to do is extract these two studs somehow. They don't even have any head on them. You probably just have to pull on them with a vice grip or, or cut them off or something. So I did some research and I found the trick in order to extract this stud. You have to get a bolt with the same exact threads as what's inside of there. And then you get yourself a 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter socket. I don't want my 10 to fall in there, so I'm going to use a 12. Then get a washer. In my case, it's just this random bracket. And then I thread that in. And then once that's threaded in, I'm going to tighten this down. And as I continue tightening this nut down, it's basically going to be pushing against the timing chain slide to extract that stud out. Okay, there you go. And the stud has been extracted. And now this timing chain slide is free from the head so I can pull up the head. And I gotta repeat the same thing over on this slide here. <clears throat> Once it cracks loose, it comes off fairly easily. <clears throat> now it becomes easier. Oh, there we are. Now this slide is loose. And I can remove it from the engine. This one's still got one more pin inside of there. But at least now, I should be able to remove the head. There we are. And here we have the head gasket, multi-layer steel. I don't see any obvious signs of failure or burnout on the head gasket itself. So now I'm down to the block and remove a couple more accessories here, including this water cooling assembly. Over here I'm also going to remove the oil filter housing over here. And you can see the oil coolers on the back here. You've got this plastic housing that houses the oil filter inside, which you would access from the top. And here you can see we've got two knock sensors. And this here is the PZV line. You can pull up on this dipstick tube and turn it over and make some mess. Well, here's something I didn't see. There's a giant inspection hole at the bottom of this oil pan. So something blew out the bottom here. Uh, we're going to have to open it up to see. By the way, the drain plug is down here and we've got an oil level sensor integrated here. These are E-Torx 10. Remove that oil pan. And you can see inside, just a cast aluminum piece. Here's the oil level sensor. See those shiny little metallic flakes in there? That's not good. Taking a look under the oil pan of this engine, here we have this metal baffle. That's to prevent oil from sloshing around too much. You've got your oil pickup tube located over here. Here's the oil pump. It's driven off of its timing chain over at the end here. And it's also got some sort of an oil pressure switch over here. And then in the middle here, this big honking thing is actually balance shafts because this is a four cylinder engine and balance shafts could definitely benefit it from vibration. And then remove that pickup. You can see there's no filter in here. Then I'm gonna remove this baffle here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this oil pump. And then I'll remove this oil pump here. I'm gonna pop off this little plastic piece here. And that guards these gears that are driven off of a gear on the crankshaft. All right, now I'm going to remove the balance shaft assembly. And that's what it looks like. It's got quite some weight to it. And let's see if we can break this free. Uh, just pull this pulley off. E-tens for the connecting rod bolts. Yeah, check out the wear on those connecting rod bearings. This thing definitely ran out of oil when that oil pan broke. Now check out how much darker this connecting rod cap is compared to the other three. This definitely burnt up a bearing. There isn't even a bearing on there. Yeah, this bearing is also pretty rough and scored up. So check it out, the bearing that was supposed to be on top here is actually spun around. 
and go into the bottom here and then the other bearing from the connecting rod side is still on the connecting rod so this is what you call spun a bearing where that bearing is completely spun around on top of that one and then that leaves you with a gap on top here and as the engine's running it's going to knock because the gap has to be filled all right i'm going to remove this piston all right so i've removed this burnt up piston you can see how black it is just from the heat this is because of a lack of oil probably when the oil pan bust a hole it just ran out of oil and then things started to overheat and looking at the actual bearings themselves you see the surfaces are really scored up and in bad shape and the shape of the bearings you can see they're just feathered out because of all that heat they just did not want to take the forces of the connecting rod wanting to rotate on the crankshaft and you can see they've actually squished outward here and formed a ridge and then this one the same thing formed a ridge eventually these connecting rod bearings are just going to seize up due to all the heat and then they're going to rotate in this direction like this and that's what causes rod knock because you no longer have a bearing at the top here as this is moving up and down. Now the rest of the pistons in this engine look okay mechanically with the exception of the oil control ring here you can see that it's actually clogged up with a little bit of carbon and gum inside of there which could prevent oil from being drained back down to the sump causing oil consumption. Now this piston is somewhat clean whereas this piston here has a little bit more darkness and then this one here is moderate. I'm just going to remove the rear main seal here. The main bearing bolts are an E12. Next we're going to turn back to the front timing cover because we got that crank bolt off. Inside of this little hubcap here is the timing chain tensioner. The tensioner is just a 17 millimeter. Just a die cast aluminum cover and here you had that oil pressure sensor that plugs into the oil pump. Now looking at the timing setup on this M270 Mercedes engine you can see we've got only two timing chains. Fairly simple, you've got one timing chain here that's going to power the oil pump and the other timing chain is the main one here which is going to power the camshafts. Now remember we already took out one slide here that makes it go this way and then this other slide here I guess we can just pull this whole thing off now. It just slides right off the crankshaft and it is keyed though. So you don't have to worry about retiming that. And over here we've got the timing chain tensioner. And you can see that's also a hydraulic unit there, which is going to use the plunger to push against the chain. Well, even the main bearing is pretty scored up. Here's the bearing that's near to the connecting rod that's spun. All right, now we can lift the crankshaft out of here. All right, so here I've got the engine all taken apart here. We're gonna go through some of the major components and take a quick look. Now we're gonna start here at the crankshaft where you can see we've got a typical four cylinder layout with two pistons on the bottom and two pistons at the top. This here is the bearing surface where the connecting rod that spun a bearing connected to. And you can see that it is actually scored up. Now because four cylinder engines have secondary moments of inertia in terms of vibration, it causes them to shake a lot. So to counteract that, Mercedes has installed a balancer. Now this thing is pretty hefty, almost as heavy as the crankshaft itself. And it's got this double gear system, which just interlocks with the gear on the crankshaft over here. And it's going to have weights inside of here that rotate in the opposite direction of the pistons themselves to counteract their inertia. And next we come to the oil pump located at the bottom of the engine. It's got that plastic pickup tube and inside of here there's a small mesh. It's not really a screen or anything but I can't really see any particles or anything inside of there. Now inside of the oil pump it's going to rotate the shaft here which is going to generate oil flow not oil pressure and that's going to push the oil down into this oil galley down here and then out the bottom here. Now coming up to the engine block itself you can see that the oil galley for the oil pump is going to push oil down through this galley over here and that is what's going to push oil to this port over here which is where your oil filter is located. Now the oil filter assembly is made of plastic. Whoa shoot. And it's got this oil cooler hooked up to it here which is going to exchange some heat with the oil itself to either help it warm up in the mornings or help it cool down when you're tracking your Mercedes Benz. Now that filter oil is going to then head back through this oil passage over here where it's going to head over to this galley across the block over here. Now from there it's then going to feed the main oil galley which runs inside of here. You can see that these sprayers here tap off of it and that's what's going to line the cylinder walls with oil. It's also got these holes here in the main bearings that are going to tap into it for oil. Alright let's see what's inside of this oil pump. <gasps> Let's crack that open and you can see the screen inside of here. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look clogged to me. And inside of here you can see the oil pump. It's a vein style oil pump. You can see when I rotate it, this is what it looks like. These veins should slide out due to centripetal force and that's what's going to allow the oil to go inside of here, get squeezed out and then travel out through this way past the oil pressure switch and then feed the oil galley. These are all the little veins inside of there. Alright, so if you continue from the main oil galley in the block, you can see that it actually tees off and goes up this way to the head. 
and up this way also to the head. So you got two oil feeds going to the head there. We've also got this part here where it tees off to the chain tensioner. Now the chain tensioner has a little bit of a spring to it, but it also has this hole here which is going to lock inside of here and collect oil from that oil galley and further pressurize this piston out against the timing chain slide to keep pressure. So looking at the top of this M270 engine, you can see it uses an open deck design, which means that it's going to give better cooling efficiency, but not too strong if you boost it too hard. Speaking of cooling, the cooling system is fairly straightforward on this engine. You've got this one port over here, which is going to go directly into the cooling jacket on this side. And then directly opposite to that, you've got another cooling port over here that comes from the cooling jacket over on this side. So basically the coolant is forced to flow around all this and then back out this way for effective cooling. Taking a look at the engine head assembly here, you can see that this uses a set of roller rocker arm systems where you've got the valve spring over here and then this roller rocker arm that's going to bridge the gap between those two and the camshaft's going to act on it directly. Then underneath here there's a hydraulic lifter. Now the hydraulic lifter on each side is powered by this oil galley, one over here and one over here. And what that's going to do is allow the oil to flow up to the rocker and take up any slack between those two. That way you don't get that tap tap tapping sound. But it also means that you don't have to do a valve adjustment. Other than that we have our standard variable valve timing cam phaser over here. This is actually a T100 Torx. If I did have that I could take this out. But I don't need to. And you get your standard camshaft profile. Other than that, this is a pretty straightforward dual overhead cam head. The only thing unique here is that this uses a direct injection, which means that your injectors are right in the middle here, and the spark plugs come in at a slight angle, because the spark plugs are accessed from the side, but the direct injectors hook up at the top. So here's the water pump assembly. You can see this here is where the pulley is going to rotate. It's got a turbine inside of here, but also inside of here is this vacuum controlled thing which moves this arm in and out, which is gonna push on this little pin over here, all vacuum controlled. Conversely, that goes over here, which is what's going to push this to close off the coolant flow. So it's kind of a thermostat, but it's all controlled through vacuum. Finally, we're gonna open up this vacuum pump. See what's inside here. Oh, this is cool. And inside the vacuum pump, you can see we've got this long piece inside of here that's gonna move kind of an eccentric curve. Well, we have this piece here, which is gonna be powered from the camshaft. Now what that's going to do is it's going to create vacuum inside of here as it moves because the air inside of here is now low pressure which is going to give you low pressure on this side sucking air into this assembly. Now that air has to go somewhere it's actually going to go through this little hole over here. If you flip this over you can see there's a small little spring valve over here which is what this is going to lead to which is actually under the valve cover so it's sort of a valve cover ventilation. So the next time you bust a hole in your oil pan and that engine light comes on you should probably pay attention otherwise you're going to end up with spun bearings just like this one. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next engine teardown is going to be and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Here's an interesting little comparison. This is a four cylinder Prius engine. You see the crankshaft is nice and thin and light. It's only got like 80 horsepower. And this is the one out of the M270. It is so heavy and chunky, but that's like 250 horsepower.